Hi, my name's Paul Zatto, Managing Director of Oz Systems, manufacturer of the RBI2 suction rectal biopsy system. Firstly, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this product video. The RBI2 is now used in over 35 countries around the world, has become the number one choice biopsy system to obtain a submucosa specimen for the diagnosis of Hirschsprung's disease in patients of all ages from neonate to adults. Before I explain the RBI2 in detail, I would like to talk about the two different types of pressure associated with taking a successful suction rectal biopsy. Type 1 is a negative suction pressure that draws a tissue inside the capsule hole to be cut by a movable blade. Type 2 is the amount of capsule pressure placed against the mucosal wall by the user during the biopsy. Over the last five years, after speaking to many surgeons from all around the world, it has become evident that there is a misunderstanding between the two types of pressure, and also the lack of understanding about the pressure combination required to take a successful biopsy, or more to the point, why the incorrect combination makes a procedure very difficult and frustrating. An unsuccessful suction biopsy attempt in most cases is caused by either an instrument's lack of suction or ability to hold suction pressure for a period of let's say one to five seconds, or by the user placing too much pressure against the mucosa during the biopsy. Excessive capsule pressure against the mucosa causes the mucosa to become tight and therefore making it difficult for the tissue to be withdrawn into the capsule hole. I'll refer again to the two types of pressure as I explain the different features of the RBI2 system. The capsules are supplied sterile, preloaded with an ultra sharp blade and an independent seal to ensure suction is maintained for the complete duration of the biopsy. The capsule hole has been designed to enable the blade to collide with the front surface of the hole. This acts as a cutting board that allows the blade to cut into the surface to ensure the specimen is cut completely from the biopsy site, preventing the possibility of tissue becoming jammed between the blade and the inside of the capsule. There are five by one centimetre insertion markers for easy identification of insertion depth from the centre of the capsule hole. The first marker is also a controlled fracture break-off point to enable easy access for retrieval of the specimen. The capsule can be placed on the handpiece in two hole orientations to suit both left and right handed or above or below hand approach techniques. Simply ensure the capsule hole is facing the correct side for your technique. Capsules are supplied in procedure packs that include three capsules, a piece of tubing and a tube syringe adapter. The manometer is supplied sterile and is for single patient use. It was introduced to help the user obtain a consistent air suction pressure whilst using the correct amount of capsule against mucosa pressure. The manometer is in minus centimetres H2O increments. It simply connects between the syringe and the tubing and then the tubing is placed onto the handpiece. It has a blue diaphragm that will react when negative pressure is obtained and maintained. It is important to understand that the manometer will give you a pressure reading only. A successful biopsy will only be achieved if the correct combination of suction pressure and capsule against wall pressure is used. Insert the capsule into the rectum to your desired depth in a neutral position and gently approximate the capsule to the mucosa wall until you see the blue diaphragm react. The manometer is supplied with a red cap covering the tubing side port and a piece of suction tubing. Do not remove the red cap until you have calibrated the manometer. To calibrate, connect a syringe onto the syringe connection port and withdraw the syringe plunger until the blue diaphragm reads below minus 300 centimetres H2O. Release the syringe plunger, remove the red cap and connect tube to the manometer. Calibration is not required between biopsies. The handpiece has been designed with only four individual components and is easy to assemble. To avoid any critical component damage during cleaning and ongoing service costs, there are no critical components such as a blade or seal on the reusable handpiece. The RBI2 handpiece has a sterilisation and storage container. Each component has a separate pocket in the container with an individual part number. It also has a diagram for assembly instructions. It has a pistol grip design to enable comfortable feel for both left and right handed use and also for above and below hand approach techniques. The handpiece outer tube acts as a housing for the blade striking piston and for securing the capsule. The blade strike piston has a cannula from front to back and a trigger for easy blade activation. To assemble the handpiece, you simply place the spring onto the blade striking piston and place into the outer housing and screw on the rear lock nut. Okay, so to take the biopsy, the first thing we do is we place the spring onto the striking piston, place the striking piston inside the handpiece 
and place on the rear lock nut. We then need to calibrate the, the manometer. Now there are two ways to take a biopsy with the RBI2 system. There's one, you can take it with a manometer, so you actually see the actual pressure that you have, or you can opt to use it with a syringe only and use it with a pure, just feeling the pressure of the negative pressure of the syringe. For this demonstration, I'm going to show you with a manometer. We simply place the syringe onto the manometer connection port. We will then pull back, calibrate the manometer to below minus 300 centimetres H2O. We will then release the syringe plunger into a neutral position, we'll remove the end cap and we'll place on the tubing. We will then place the tubing onto the handpiece. Now it's very important at this stage that we don't load a capsule before we place the tubing onto the handpiece. The capsules are a single use item and by placing the tube on the, hand, on the striking piston you can accidentally push forward which would make you fire the capsule and once it's fired the blade's gone through and you'll have to use another capsule so just something to remember. You then simply place on the capsule onto the end of the handpiece and just check whichever technique you're going to use or if you're left or right handed that you've got the capsule hole facing in the direction that you're aware of. We will then have a, an assistant on the syringe and they will you'll place the capsule into the rectum to the, diet in, to the desired insertion depth and you'll get your assistant to pull back on the syringe as we spoke about before and tell you when you're at your desired, um, desired suction. And you'll wait for the manometer to cause a reaction and the manometer will hold. You'll notice there's no loss of suction because of the independent seal. So there's no rush. It's very important that at this stage you're, you're concentrating that you're not actually pushing hard against the mucosa. When you're satisfied that you're at the right, time, that you haven't got too much pressure on the mucosa and also that you've maintained the suction, then it's time to take the biopsy. Now the biopsy is taken with a thumb, thumb trigger to give you more stability instead of pulling away from the mucosa. Now as we push forward on the thumb trigger, you'll notice that the blade comes through, you'll see the silver blade. Now the first piece of resistance on the thumb trigger is the blade cutting the front section of the hole. It's been designed so the front section of the hole drops down like a cutting board. It's very important to go all the way through the cutting board. Okay, so then once you've, um, you've taken the biopsy, you'll, your syringe will be left into the neutral position and you'll withdraw from the patient. Okay, it's important before we take the capsule off that we make sure that you can't see any part of the blade. This is very important because sometimes if you push and you haven't pushed through that first part of resistance, what you've got is the blade hasn't completed its cycle and gone right to the back and helped release the specimen. So once you're happy that the blade has gone all the way through and you can't see any part, you'll simply remove the capsule from the device, the handpiece, and then you'll notice that the first one centimetre increment, as we said before, is a controlled fracture point. Simply place your fingers under each side and your thumbs on top and, and push downwards on either end and there's, you'll notice that the seal is now out of the way and what we're left with is the blade totally wedged into the plastic to stop any accidental sharp injuries and also the specimen is sitting inside. Now very important that when you take your syringe, fill it with saline and place it on the capsule hole, not from behind. It's very important to place it on the capsule hole. If you place it from behind, what you're going to do is you actually tend to push the specimen deeper into the capsule. We want to come from the top and we want to give a really good quick push of saline. Thank you again for your time and I hope you found this product video useful. Please do not hesitate to contact us for further information regarding purchasing the system or for information regarding further use of the system. Thank you.